good afternoon, it's Long Haul Tanker, Straight Razor Shaving with Long Haul Tanker, and it is Monday, October the 31st, Halloween Eve, or Halloween night, whatever, uh, and uh, it is uh, uh, about 17.35, 5.35 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time, and I am in Fernley, Nevada, and I am 30 miles from uh, my unloading point, tomorrow morning at 0800. Now, it's been a couple of days since I've done a video. I'm keeping uh, my word, you might say, on cutting back on doing as much uh, recording on the road uh, and the, 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 tr you know, the hassle that it is. Uh, but that gives me more stories to tell and I have some. If you saw my little short video from uh, a couple days ago, you know I had a breakdown. And it wasn't that serious, but the troublesome part was the response time. Now what happened was is that, now I've made this run from Houston to Nevada many times. Maybe different destinations, different unloading points, uh, but I've always been around Fernley, Silver Springs, Sparks, uh, Nevada, uh, and, and those locales. And so I know the route very well. Where to fuel, when to stop, where I'm going to lay over for the night. Let's go over the equipment. As I carry on, let me say, uh, if you're watching me on YouTube, thank you. 202 subscribers now, and I thank you very much uh, for staying with me and watching me, however it is that you may watch me. And uh, thank you to the uh, Shaving Cadre and uh, that group of fellows. For my razor tonight, we're using a Joseph uh, Elliott Best Silver Steel and it's got the word perfection uh, engraved on the face of the blade. Now, we all know that Joseph Elliott is a Sheffield, uh, England, uh, Sheffield steel, but it doesn't say Sheffield anywhere on it. And the back of the tang does look like it has been maybe worked a little bit, so maybe they ground it out uh, where it says Sheffield by itself or Sheffield, England. The difference being if it says Sheffield by itself, it's pre-1891. If it says Sheffield, England, it's post-1891. My guess is, is that, and it's more than just a guess, it, it's likely that this is a post-1891 and it's the engraving on the uh, face of the blade. To me, that gives that away. I don't I cannot think of any example of a razor that pre-1891 that has the engraving uh, on the face of the blade. My soap uh, is Barrister and Man, the full measure of man. And this is a delightful soap. Uh, I was thinking, I used it a couple of nights ago on the road, and boy, this smells an awful lot like tobacco. Well, it's kind of like an uh, duh moment. I read that before coming in tonight from Barrister and Man's webpage, uh, the prominent notes are uh, tobacco, sandalwood, citrus, and uh, vanilla. And so I don't know. The big one that was the, that was the big tell for me was that it said tobacco. It smelled like tobacco and it's tobacco. So that's uh, kind of like a uh, duh. Just a lovely, lovely scent. And it lathers up super well. For my brush tonight, we're using the Americana. It's a small handle, 24 millimeter uh, uh, premium silver tip badger. It's about $125, $35 if I remember correctly from Amazon some years ago. And it's, if I'm, I, now I'm gonna say this and I, I'm almost 100% sure that it's true, almost 99.99, that it's made by Shave Mac. I only wish it said Shave Mac on it. Um, anyway, 
I'm going to load it up good and strong. Uh, it, this is an excellent scrubbing brush. Uh, it's got a lot of uh, scritch in it, as they say, scritch for scrubbing. So there we are with that. There we are with that. Let me take a moment and wipe this off the, the bowl and my fingers. Very thick uh, as it comes off the puck. This uh, lather that I'm pulling off. Uh, and it may very well be that I am not just overloading the brush, but I'm being wasteful. I don't know. But uh, I have a feeling that what I'm putting on my face would probably do me for the shave. So, as I say, I know my routes up here uh, very well. And I, what I know is, is that I can run the uh, better part of two days from Houston to Belleville, Kansas, where there's a Love's truck stop that I always fuel at. And so I leave the yard with a full tank of fuel and get to uh, Belleville. Yeah, I'm kind of low, I'm below a quarter tank, but I have never run out of fuel. And it's fuel or diesel or diesel fuel, it's not gasoline or gas, it's diesel. It's that stuff that we're about ready to run out of. So the news says with a uh, however many days it is, 25, 35. The lowest I've heard is five days of reserve, but I don't think that's accurate. I think it's uh, the, the two or three sources I saw that said 25, 135, and 15. And so, but anyway, nonetheless, as I got just north of Minneapolis, Kansas, the truck started chugging going up a hill. And I said, there's no way I'm out of fuel. And I checked the, uh, the computer. There is a reading in the uh, fuel economy, gallons remaining, and it told me I had 27 gallons. And the fuel gauge on the dashboard said I was just under a quarter tank. And so I was, and where I ended up, and, and so it chugged me down from 65 miles an hour down to 35 miles an hour, and I moved off to the shoulder of the road, and as soon as I stopped the truck, it died. And it wouldn't start. And, uh, as I've said many a time, I'm not a mechanic and I don't want to be a mechanic, as if it would do any good in this instance. But I pretty well diagnosed, I said, if, it's not, if I've got 27 gallons of fuel and it's chugged and died and it won't start and acting like it is out of fuel, but it's not out of fuel, what's your next guess? Fuel filters on a diesel, there are two, at least on my truck, the Mac Anthem truck, there are two uh, fuel filters. One is for the sight glass, what they call a water separator, and it's a smaller filter than the larger one, which is just a standard, what they call fuel filter. And diesel's different than gasoline. It, it takes, I'm not sure about other trucks. Most of the trucks I've ever driven have a sight glass for the water separator and a, uh, and a, and a second regular fuel filter. And it's almost two, two and a half times the size larger than the uh, fuel filter that goes into the sight glass, the f water separator. And the thing about diesel is, is that there's sometimes junk, uh, debris that's inside diesel. Uh, 
I don't know if that's because of the, the refining process or the, the filtering process when it comes out of the refinery. I don't know. Nonetheless. So I opened the hood and I looked into the sight glass and it's supposed to remain somewhere between about a third full to a half full, the sight glass, and it was empty. And so I called my shop supervisor and told him what was going on and he said, well, it sounds like you run out of fuel. And I bristled at that. I did not run out of fuel. My truck says I've got 27 gallons. And I have, and by, by the way, I opened, I took the fuel caps off the tanks uh, with my flashlight, looked down in there, and there was fuel in the tanks. I can't measure that, but there was fuel in the bottom of the tank on both of them one more so than other than the other and um, my uh, shop manager said that they were going to dispatch a mobile mechanic and come out with uh, new filters for the truck. And they can tell, you give them the VIN number of the truck and they can tell which parts exactly by part number they're supposed to get. Now, I left, I left, uh, I spent the night that, uh, and left that morning, Saturday morning, I, I was in uh, Tatanka, 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 uh, Oklahoma. And uh, so I got up, got rolling about 5.15, I think it was that morning, 5 o'clock, 5.15. And the, the breakdown occurred uh, at, right at about 9.30 that morning. So what, four, four some hours later. And so my company, like a lot of companies, subscribe to a, uh, a, a mobile mechanic on-road service 
Yeah, a lot of like uh, AAA, though that's not one of them, but it's like AAA. If you have a breakdown, you call them. And people, service providers will subscribe to this, uh, the, the dispatch company because they want the business and they know that's a way to, for, to get the business. And uh, whether it's companies like Lodge Truck Stops, they have a mobile repair service that subscribes to being a provider. And so the company we subscribe to will call who's closest in the area and are you available? And so they'll make all the arrangements and that's a good thing. Otherwise we'd have to have full-time people on staff just to handle, you know, finding a mobile mechanic that's willing to come out and agreed upon price, what's your road, road rate and mileage rate, et cetera, et cetera. And so now it's an electronic setup. They send out the dispatch the, the responding mechanic or company will send a reply to uh, the dispatch. Yes, we'll take it. We can be there in X number of minutes. And that's how you know that it's confirmed that they have accepted the job and they will make the, the run out to fix the truck. And they'll get a description of what the problem is and so forth. And all of these uh, electronic communications are relayed to my shop manager and to me as the driver. And so the first respondent said that they'd be there in 35 minutes. Wow, they were coming out of Salina, Kansas. And uh, they would be there. And they came out from one of the big name truck stops. And so, I waited the 35 minutes.
then 35 minutes became 45 minutes, became 60 minutes, became 90 minutes and became two hours. So I called my shop manager and I said, where are they? They haven't showed. And well, I'll call the, the contract company. 30 minutes later, no, no word back. Of course, my shop manager is busy. He can't spend all day just on this. And so, after 30 minutes, giving him 30 minutes, I called him back and I said, you, did you hear anything from him? And he said, well, I called them and uh, they didn't answer and I left a message. And he didn't think to call me back, but you know. Uh, I'm just a driver. And I said, do you mind if I call them? He said, yeah, sure, go ahead, I don't care. And I've called this company before in the past, getting updates, trying to figure out what's going on. And so they answered. I had to wait a little bit, I don't know, five minutes on hold or, you know, in a, in, in a queue. But I eventually got through. Uh, to a nice lady and uh, we anyway I told her what was going on she said oh no this is ridiculous so she put me on hold called the uh, repair company that was supposed to be coming out to find figure out what was going on and and she came back online in just a, just a few minutes and, and said that they have no record of, of receiving the dispatch, responding to the dispatch, and so they lost it. They lost it. And so I'm sitting there, we're now pushing on to three hours waiting. Now we're 12 30, 1 o'clock, 12, it's over between 12 and 1. And so they had to re dispatch it and find a, a available provider who would respond quickly. And so they did. It turned out to be a Love's, you know, uh, their uh, roadside repair service out of where was that? Let me think. Anyway, it's just to the west, Abilene. Abilene, Kansas, they came out of. And they replied with a wait time, they'd be there in 45, or in, eight, in a 90 minutes, hour and a half. Well, okay, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Uh, of course, by now I'm impatient. So an hour and a half goes by, and now we're looking at about three o'clock. And I've been there since 9:30, and uh, they're not there. Another 20, you know, 15, 20 minutes goes by, and I called the uh, the contract company, and I said they're not here yet, and uh, they brought them on the line with me on the line and uh, oh yeah so, so the hour and a half you know, they're supposed to be there oh we're just getting ready to leave we got your filters we were uh, et cetera et cetera and we're just now getting ready to leave and I said well how soon till you get here and he said about 90 minutes now 
This is a fairly easy job, you understand. All he's got to do is change the filters to see if that's really the problem. And uh, so he showed up. He did show up. I'll give him that. A nice young man came. And uh, now they were given the VIN number from which they can look up which exact parts they're supposed to bring with them. Two filters, the sight glass and the main. He brought the one for the sight glass and not the main. Wrong numbered filter. But he did change the sight glass. It took him all of... 15 minutes and uh, after a little finagling, uh, had to uh, reprime, reprime the fuel pump. And I guess there's a, a, a pump where you, uh, something, something he was pushing on to re inside the uh, uh, motor cage uh, on the fuel pump to prime the pump. Well, after, I don't know, three, four, five attempts, it finally fired up. And, uh, and got underway at about 5.30, so, uh, 17.30, so central time. Now this is a perfect example. Now, so you can't stop your clock. Once you start your clock in the morning, you have you have 11 hours drive time, you have 14 hours on duty time, and once that differential of three hours between the on duty and the driving is consumed, your on duty clock and your drive clock become concurrent and continue to tick down even though you may be off duty and so your day is on a day like that uh, your day is quickly expiring and so when I pulled out uh, not yet Your data, your time is, is gone. So when I pulled out, I had two and a half hours left. Um, I shot up to uh, uh, Belleville. Kansas and uh, where that loves truck stop is and, and refueled the truck and then shot on up to uh, to York, Nebraska where the big Petros is because uh, I wanted to get up to I-80. That was I, actually where I wanted to get that Saturday night 
was to, to Sydney, Nebraska on I-80. But my time was gone and I couldn't do it, so I had to reroute and recalculate my plan. On getting here, so I could make on-time delivery tomorrow morning. Well, here's where the fun begins. I burned up all that extra time sitting on the side of the road. And that's why I like having extra time built into the load because you never know what's going to happen. And uh, and so I started recalculating distances from point A to point B and uh, came with a, up with a plan that when I left York, Nebraska yesterday morning, I had to drive all the way to Green River Wyoming, uh, 678 miles, and when I stopped last night, I had nine minutes remaining on my drive clock. Now imagine if that truck stop had been full. Trucks, where do I go? How do I, you know, where am I gonna park? Look on a satellite map, look at that Loves in Green River, Wyoming, and see what's within five minutes. The answer to that question is no place for a truck to stop. The nearest truck stop is about 20 miles away at Little America. <clears throat> but I left early enough, I got in about 3.30. So I got in early enough to find a parking place. Now my intended park, uh, my intended stopping place for today was Winnemucca. They got a nice lunch truck stop there. Winnemucca, Nevada. I just love saying that word, Winnemucca. It just rolls off the lips and the tongue. But as I uh, was approaching Winnemucca earlier, uh, I had two and a half hours left on my drive clock. And uh, it was uh, about two hours and 10 minutes to Fernley. And they have, uh, actually they don't have as many parking places as uh, Winnemucca does, but I could get in over here at about 4.30 Pacific time. No, scratch that, four o'clock. Actually about 3.55. And uh, and I said, that is early enough that I'll probably be right at the beginning of uh, what I call a circus. <laughs> 
And uh, sure enough, we got in over here at four o'clock, 3.55, and immediately my eye could spot three or four open sp uh, spaces uh, round about. And so I said, yeah, I'm good. I, and I grabbed the first one that So 650 miles a day and I left 30, 28 minutes on my drive clock. And I'm sitting um, 20, 25 miles from uh, uh, my uh, destination point for unloading tomorrow in Silver Springs. And uh, And so I don't have to get up at the crack of dawn. I can get up about 6.30, 7 o'clock, and I'll give myself 40 minutes. I've been there before. I know what it looks like. I know where I'm going. It's kind of nothing but sand and desert is what you're going into. So it's been an adventurous trip. I I don't particularly like it, but that it just it illustrates so many things about trip management, time management, making sure you got to, you know, insisting upon, no, I need another day. Give me another day. I can't make it. I can't go 2,000 miles in three days. 500 miles a day is the calculation. Now, we can do better than that. But for calculation purposes, 500 miles a day, that's four days, delivery on the fifth day. So I wanted to do this shave tonight to uh, tell that story. Now that I'm here, everything's good for uh, unloading tomorrow, delivering. Now, one other thing I'm going to mention is that stay tuned to the channel. 
uh, because I've got a special shave coming up in, uh, probably on the next shave in two days and I'm going to record it and bring it to you. So I want to give you a heads up on that. Make sure you're, when you see it come up, it's, uh, and I'll tell you more about what's actually going on when it, when I do the shave and, and But it's a big deal. I think it is. And hope you do too when I bring it to you. I think the edge on this razor is a, uh, a conical. Uh, I generally put conical edges on the uh, Sheffield steel. And the, uh, the other thing I had in my mind I wanted to make mention of was my my, uh, my good buddies at the uh, Shaving Cadre had one of their Sunday Zoom calls yesterday, and it was a, a very good one. So if you're if you're not uh, if you don't have an account over there, by all means and with all haste, uh, go make an account. Join the conversation. If you like wet shaving and straight razor shaving, producing a very satisfactory shave tonight. No complaints whatsoever. The uh, Bear Stern man is, is doing just fine. The full measure of man and its tobacco scent. It's a little thick. I'm trying to cut it down as much as I can. Now, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if YouTube gives me a, a red flag 
because the music is pretty loud outside my door. They've given me red flags before for such a thing. Please don't. Beyond my control. Circumstances beyond my control. Yeah, I'm getting kind of better at that. Now the aftershave I've been using in the truck, <clears throat> one of the six that I carry with me, or seven, uh, that I carry with me in the truck on a regular basis and keep stocked up in the truck, is uh, a Panade uh, Whiskey Woods. Goes real good with this scent. No, I'm gonna leave that.
knocked over my brush, scattered uh, lather on the countertop. So, anyway, I got a little bit of time tonight, so I'm not as worried or as annoyed by uploading to YouTube using Verizon Wireless and the hours that it's going to take to get it uploaded, which I find to be very annoying. Did I say annoying? Very annoying. In the cab of a truck when you're trying to get ready for bed and it goes to two, three, four o'clock in the morning, it's taking five, six, eight hours to upload, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that feels pretty good under the chin there.
I'm waiting for another knock on the door is what I'm waiting for. <laughs> All right, let's rinse it off and see what we got. And I will be doing a head shave and so we will go ahead with the camera roll. putting alum on my fingers to pull uh, to pull my face back. Done with the face shave. Let's move over to the head shave. <clears throat> Dry off the Joseph Elliot. Yeah, Elliot. So there's the Joseph Elliot perfection that we use for the face shave. I'm moving over to the uh, head shave, which we usually use. I use <laughs> me and the mouse in my pocket. We typically use a, a gold dollar or union razor, and this is the uh, gold dollar 1996, nice wood handle, uh, shoulderless version. Uh, and this one was honed up on a, uh, and finished on a uh, Shafton glass 30,000. done with the soap so I'm putting it away over here all right And I did use the clippers tonight, and uh, buzzed off the uh, excess growth.
so I'm gonna have some uh, homemade beef stew tonight in the truck that my wife made for me. I haven't gotten a word yet about uh, getting a backhaul, but that could come anytime between now and tomorrow. I, I put in a request for one of those backhauls that I like so much out of San Diego. And you've seen me go on that two or three times, I guess. It's always hard to see that line when I have just fresh cut with the clippers.
Yeah, that's good. We'll get that a little bit better, a little bit more refined on the next cut in a couple days. Not yet. I knew it was coming. There it was. Now this, this truck stop sits about 40 miles east of uh, Reno and you get all the traffic uh, that comes out of San Francisco anything on I-80, anything out of Reno, out of Sacramento that's going eastbound, or yeah, eastbound out of Sacramento and Central, Central Valley, California. Most of the traffic coming out of Los Angeles, unless they have a specific reason to come this way, they'll probably go up I-15 toward uh, Salt Lake City. There it is, I think we're done. Let me check it one more time. Yeah, we're fine. Good shave tonight. We use the uh, full measure of man, uh, Barrister and Man. We use the Americana by Shave Mac. Uh, we used uh, the uh, Joseph Elliott Perfection on the face shave and a uh, gold dollar on the, uh, on the, uh, head shave and I think we're doing okay. I think we're doing just fine. All right, hour and 16, 17 minutes. That's not too, 
it's not too bad uh, for my uh, for the amounts of time that I've taken before. So thank you very much for watching, staying with me, uh, watching it any way uh, you want to, uh, three times the speed, whatever, whatever my daughter says, my wife says. Uh, uh, stay tuned for the next video. It's gonna be a very special uh, video. Thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you down the road.